Hello everyone, welcome to the another lecture on anthropology of paper 1. Today we will be discussing about biological anthropology which comes under the syllabus 1.3 under the heading the scope and relevance of the subfields of anthropology. Similar to our previous lecture, we will also be discussing what are the key study areas of this subfield and the emerging trends. Also, we will be seeing about the approaches or methods used. Then we will be discussing about the relevance part of it. Finally, we will see some of the anthropologists related to this subfield. Let us get into the topic. What is biological anthropology? Biological anthropology deals with the evolution of humans. It studies the journey of the modern man, how he has evolved over a period of time. Next, it studies the variability of humans. There are differences in humans. For example, hair, our skin color, or even the facial structure, or there are differences within the blood group, etc. So, anthropology or biological anthropology for that matter is interested in studying this phenomena. Next, it is also interested in studying the adaptation to environmental stresses by various human communities. For example, we can see different people living in different climatic conditions. For example, people living in the Arctic or people living in the uh, hot desert like Sahara or the Thar desert. So, how it is possible and what are the different enabling features they have so that they could live in such harsh conditions. So, these are the things what biological anthropology is interested in and how it studies, it is studies using an evolutionary perspective. So, evolutionary perspective means over the course of evolution, humans for that matter, he might have adapted certain features which is very beneficial and he might have left off certain features that are not beneficial. Example, I could quote tail. If you see, monkeys have tails but over a course of evolutions from monkeys to great apes, this feature will not be evident and even it is not evident in human. Next, it examines not only the physical form of humans, the bones, muscles and organs, but also how it functions to allow survival and reproduction. So, that is, it does not examine the physical forms, but it also tries to study its functionality. It also emphasizes the interconnectedness of biology and culture. That is how biology and culture are related. That is how culture influences biology or biology influences culture. This is called biocultural approach. We have already seen. So, this definition you could use to describe or whenever you are writing an answer on biological anthropology, you could use this definition and it would summarize the whole picture of it. Let us discuss what are the key focus areas of biological anthropology in detail. One of the key focus area of biological anthropology is to study human evolution. That is how modern human has evolved over a period of time and who are their ancestors. In the next coming slides, I have discussed about human evolution, who are their ancestors and from where we have evolved. So, before going to that part, we will also try to map how this part is related to our UPSC syllabus. So, the human evolution will be studying in syllabus 1.4. Under this, we will be studying certain theories like Darwinian, post-Darwinian theories or synthetic theories, etc. And we will also try to understand what are the factors that have influenced in the evolution of humans. Also, as I told, anthropology studies about human ancestors. So, this part we will be discussing chapter 1.6. The immediate ancestors of humans are like Homo sapiens, the Rhodesian man, the Neanderthal man, Astropathicines. So, all these things we will be discussing in detail when we are dealing with the chapter 1.6. To understand human evolution more precisely, it is important to have some basic knowledge on the taxonomic ranking system or classification system. So, what does taxonomy mean? It means classification of living organisms that have some similar characteristics. Under taxonomic classification system, we have certain levels. Once you go from the top to bottom, the similarities and characteristics between organisms at the species level will be more common compared to the one at the top. So, there are various levels in taxonomic classification system that is domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, etc. So, I will just give a brief overview. Under domain, there are three categories that is bacteria, archaea and eukarya. So, this means organisms that have complex cell structures. Since we are concerned only about the evolution of man, we will be dealing with respect to that. So, humans comes under the domain eukarya and further this domain is classified into various kingdoms that is plantae, animalia, fungi and protista and it is very clear that humans are animals and we come under this kingdom animalia. Further, this kingdom is classified into various phylums that is Carteta, anthropods, or molluscus, etc. Since we have vertebrates, we are classified under this phylum Carteta. 
Further, this carpenter is classified into many more classes such as mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. So, humans are classified under this class mammals. Why mammals? Because mammals have certain characteristics. For example, they give birth to the young ones directly. Then they feed the younger ones with the mammillary glands. So, because of this reasons, we are classified under mammals. And further, mammals are classified into various orders such as primates, carnivora, or rodentia. And primates, this includes monkeys, apes, and humans. So, this is the area where we are more concerned about. Further, regarding the family, genus, and species, we will discuss in the next slide. I would like to say one more point. Species, it has a special characteristics that animals or organisms that comes under the species classification has the ability to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. We have seen, we have seen humans belong to this order primates. Further, this order has been classified into various superfamilies, families and species. So, humans belongs to the superfamily hominidae, which includes the apes, that is the gibbon, siamang, orangutan, chimpanzees and also includes the humans. Further, it is the superfamily is divided into family that is hominidae where the species homo sapiens or humans belong. Concerned with our syllabus, we are primates and primate evolution is an important topic in uh, UPSC. So, please take a look. So, these are the primates which we are going to study that is prosimians, world world monkeys, apes and new world monkeys along with humans. I hope till now you would have got a brief idea of this taxonomic classification. In the next slide, we will see how the evolution has happened. This picture shows the evolution of human being from a common primate ancestor and this happened sometimes before 65 million years ago and due to various changes due to physiological changes or environmental changes during the course of development from the primate ancestor many living organisms have developed they are the prosimians that is the lemurs and tarsiuses or the tarsius then the new world monkeys the world world monkeys as well as the gibbons orangutans gorillas chimpanzees and finally the humans so you could see the classification branching here so each branch has developed into a separate organism that's what given here and i would also like to include certain important topics first thing hominoids so when you say hominoids it includes the greater apes plus the humans when you say hominids it includes only the humans and human species as i said in the earlier slide many species of human human like are extinct but we will study and we will see what are they in the next slide. The one more thing which I would like to point out is anthropoids. So, when you say anthropoids, it includes new world monkeys, old world monkeys plus the great apes plus the hominids. So, the prosimians will not come into the picture. I want to add some more points to the topic primate. Uh, we have seen apes but apes is differentiated into lesser apes and greater apes so lesser apes includes gibbon though there are many differential characteristics between lesser apes and uh, greater apes one thing which i could say is they are very smaller in size compared to the greater apes the other thing which i want to point out is around 8 to 6 million years ago the common ancestor between chimpanzees and humans lived similarly a common ancestor between monkeys and humans that lived uh, around 25 million years ago in the next slide, we will see which are the closest species to humans. By saying species, I hope everybody will understand what is a species mean, which has the ability to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So, we will see what are the human species or human ancestors that lived long ago. We know that around 6 to 8 million years ago, a common ancestor between chimpanzees and homo sapiens lived but after that there have been many other species which has been very close to homo sapiens and we'll be seeing about them now and even in our lecture sorry even in our syllabus 1.6 we'll be studying about these species in detail so what are they they are homo sapiens which includes chromagon grimaldi and chancellati next the homo erectus which is here then the most closest relative has been the neanderthals and we will also be studying about the Homo habilis and Australopithecus africanus, afarensis and anamensis. I hope you might have got a 
decent idea of the human evolution and we'll be looking into this in detail when we are dwelling to the syllabus the next key focus area of biological anthropology is, is to study human variations for example there are different blood groups or uh, for that matter blood enzymes are different and uh, respiratory functions are different when we study about the adaptations due to ecological stresses we'll be dealing about this and there are also differences in hair color skin color etc other area that interests biological anthropologist is primatology so what is primatology it is a study of primates so i hope everybody will be familiar with the word primate so what does primate includes it includes monkeys apes humans for the prosimians so apes are divided into lesser and greater so lesser apes include dipon whereas greater apes include chimpanzees gorillas bonobos etc humans we know homo sapiens further monkeys are classified into old world as well as new world then prosimians we have tarsius lemurs etc so we'll be dealing about this in the subject or in the syllabus 1.5 we'll be studying about what are the characteristics of these primates how they have evolved what are the adaptations and their taxonomy how they have been classified we have already seen this and their behavior and uh, what are the living major primates etc another focus area is paleo anthropology so paleo it means study of fossils in the earlier slides we have seen how human have evolved and how they have been classified taxonomically how this taxonomy classification is done that is based on the findings of fossils and they study the fossils and they try to correlate their age by various uh, dating methods and they try to fix the position in the phylogeny so this is paleoanthropology biological anthropologists are also interested in studying genetics genetics is a study of inherited traits that is how certain traits are passed from parents to offsprings they are interested in this genetics field because they want to understand the role of genes in shaping human traits human genetics topic is a very broad topic and it has been given extensively in upsc syllabus we'll be dealing under 9.1 and also so we'll be dealing under 9.2 9.3 and 9.4 it is a very big topic and we'll discuss extensively on this when we move on to this part of the syllabus another area of interest is molecular anthropology so what is molecular anthropology it tries to study primate phylogeny plus human evolution through the genetic information so phylogeny means the classification of species or certain living organisms which we have seen earlier for example we have classified chimpanzees as a separate group and again humans as a separate group then bonobos etc how this classification is being made this is done by studying the genetic genetic material or the dna sequence using various advanced technologies which we'll see in detail when we are discussing the genetics chapter so this is in a natural molecular anthropology another sub branch of biological anthropology is forensic anthropology so forensic means it is the application of scientific methods and techniques to investigate plus solve legal issues like in many movies we have seen whenever there is a crime scene they will be calling the forensic team which will be collecting the blood stains or they will be collecting the hair samples to analyze the dna and to come to a conclusion or to identify the criminal so this is where forensic anthropology comes in so we'll be dealing about this topic in chapter 12 forensic anthropology let's discuss the evolution of biological anthropology biological anthropology became a formal discipline during the early 20th century during this period physical anthropologists like boyas and hadlika conducted extensive studies on human skeletal remains to understand human variations this is the period 
when anthropologists were only concerned with the human variation part and you can also relate this period where the topic of racism was very prominent during this period next during the mid 20th century anthropologists like sherwood and washburn started the study of comparative anatomy this expanded the scope of biological anthropology so what does comparative anatomy means it is the study of similarities and differences in the anatomy of different species to understand human biology and evolution next during the late 20th century there were huge development in science and technology biological anthropology being an interdisciplinary study gained much from this for example the inclusion of biomolecular approaches or the latest techniques like dna sequencing techniques or any genetic techniques has helped anthropology to precisely delineate the phylogeny of human evolution in the contemporary time during the 21st century biological anthropologists are also interested in studying the bio behavior for example jane goodall's study on chimpanzees to understand the behavioral aspects of primate social system which will help us to understand human behavior too next approaches and methods used in biological anthropology comparative anatomy we have seen earlier and biocultural approach that is studying biology and cultural perspective together then there are many genetic techniques or biological techniques have been adopted by biological anthropology like mitochondrial dna analysis or dna sequencing so all these techniques we will be studying in while discussing the chapter 9.1 of human genetics like dna technology or dna profiling gene mapping etc emerging trends in biological anthropology the first one is paleogenomics it is the study of ancient human remains by analyzing the dna samples so this study can throw light on questions such as when the split between neanderthals and the humans happened or when humans moved out of africa etc the second one is epigenetics so epigenetics means the study of heritable changes in gene function that do not involve changes in the underlying dna sequence this simply means that it is a study of how your behavior and your environment affect the genes work for example i could quote the example of now cell and a muscle cell both have common dna but both perform different functions for example the function of now cell is to transport information whereas the function of muscle cell is to aid in mobility but how they are able to do two different work the answer is epigenetics it allows the muscle cell to turn on genes that is important for its function and to turn off genes that are not important for that hope you would have understood the next one is the evolutionary medicine this is also known as darwinian medicine this means application of the principles of evolution stated by darwin to understand the diseases and the treatment of diseases for example take the case of drug resistant bacteria even after treating it with various drugs it still evolving so study of this phenomena is called evolutionary medicine now let's discuss the relevance of biological anthropology in contemporary times first it helps in disease research and prevention for example biological anthropologists conduct population genetic studies to understand human variations this knowledge is particularly important to predict the disease prevalence and also to design targeted prevention strategies for example we can quote the example of human genome project next we have already seen about the evolutionary medicine which tries to understand the evolutionary process of certain diseases and how it interacts with human so the knowledge of this diseases will help again in providing targeted prevention strategies for example studying the evolutionary origins of sickle cell trait as an adaptation to malaria next it helps in forensic investigation forensic anthropology helps to identify human remains and provide information such as age sex and the ancestry 
of the deceased individual. This is particularly relevant in case of mass disasters or crimes. Also, it helps in identifying the legitimate parents by using techniques such as mitochondrial DNA analysis. Next, it helps in understanding human evolution. It uses techniques such as analyzing ancient DNA to understand how humans have evolved over a period of time. Further, it not only tells about the past, it can also throw insights on the present and it can predict the course of evolution for humans in the future. Another important relevance of biological anthropology is primate conservation. In this 21st century, we can see a lot of primates are getting disappeared due to lack of food or due to encroachment into the forest areas, etc. So, the knowledge of biological anthropology, especially the primatology, can play a role in primate conservation. One good example is Jen Goodall, who does extensive research on wild chimpanzees in Tanzania. Let's discuss some of the physical anthropologists and their works in this field. The first one is Jane Goodall. She is involved in uh, researching on chimpanzees. We have already seen this. Uh, just to understand the bio behavior. Let's discuss about the Leakey family. They are a group of paleoanthropologists. That is persons who are involved in studying human fossils to find the ancient humans. And uh, this is Louis Leakey. And this is Mary Leakey. And uh, he is the son of Mary Leakey. Let's uh, find out the significant discoveries. Richard Leakey is known for his discovery of the Homo erectus fossils in Kenya. It is also known as the Tukano Bay. Whereas Mary Leakey is accredited with the findings of early hominin fossils at Tanzania at a place called Old Boy George. And she is also known for the findings of evidence on bipedalism in early hominins. So, what does bipedalism mean? It is a kind of locomotion that is walking on two legs. If you see the evolutionary chart, we have the great apes, then the homo species. The great apes and before that, they had the locomotion called quadrupedal locomotion. That is walking on four uh, limbs, two legs and two hands. Whereas, the homo species started the locomotion called bipedalism. So, this discovery she has made. And she is known for that. The next one is Donald Johnson. He is known for the discovery of fossil hominin Lucy. It is very important topic. It is also known as Australopithecus afarensis, where he has found it in Ethiopia in 1974. One of the famous Indian physical anthropologists, B. S. Guha, is known for his studies on racial classification and population genetics in India. Racial classification has classified the Indian population into various races. And we will study this extensively in paper 2. An important physical anthropologist in India is B.M. Das. He is well known for the study of cranial morphology, which is the study of skulls structures to understand the evolutionary and regional differences among populations. I believe through this lecture, you would have understood what are primates and what are uh, the greater apes and where human stands in the human evolutionary line, etc. And certain concepts which are important for the exam, such as the hominins, hominoids, or the anthropoids etc. I have made it very clear and also we have discussed very briefly on primates as well. In the next upcoming lectures, similarly we will discuss the scope and relevance of linguistic anthropology as well as archaeological anthropology. Thank you so much.